I'm here at the Southampton Boat Show this morning, walking past Targa's to my left and Sargo's to my right. But the boat we're here to see today is from neither of those brands. It's actually from Nordstar. And it's this, just here, the Nordstar 42 Plus. Now this is the second largest boat they do. They also do a 49, which incidentally is the largest offshore pilot house cruiser you can currently buy. But this 42 Plus is really impressive in quite a lot of ways. So let's jump straight on board and take a look at the details. Now ahead of this big aft platform we have dual access into the cockpit, it's nice and symmetrical that but there are options and we'll be saying that a lot as we walk around this boat because it's actually relatively bespoke. What we have here is a U-shaped seating section and ordinarily this would be hinged so that you could hinge that entire section up and gain access down into the engine bay. On this particular boat, which is owned by a keen fisherman, these units are fixed because on either side we have live bait wells so they're connected up to pipe work and so on. Access to the engine bays instead is through the hatches down here on this section of the deck. You'll see that as a keen fisherman he's also got uh, a joystick back here on the port side which makes plenty of sense but that's actually on the standard options list. I quite like the shore power arrangement as well. As you can see we've got a little uh, locker here that enables the cable to go in and out unimpeded and the shore power just here on the back out of the way so we can keep those cables nice and wide of your boarding points. But if this U-shaped seating section is not your cup of tea, you can also have an asymmetrical layout with an L-shaped seating section around the back there and access solely on this starboard side. But let's take a little walk around these side decks now because these are particularly relevant on this boat. Now on a lot of these uh, offshore pilot house cruisers uh, from the likes of Sargo and Targa, you often get very wide side decks. Well, they've kept them relatively narrow here in order to maximise the beam in that saloon. And it really does work, as we'll see in a second. As we move forward, we get precisely what you'd expect. Here's the skipper's door on the starboard side. If you look straight through, you'll see there's an additional door on the port side too. A pair of side doors on this pilot house for easy access onto those side decks. And on both sides, we have side gates. I like this mechanism too, a simple uh, twist and pull, and up it comes, this gate in its entirety, giving you fantastic access through that cut down bulwark with that non-slip tread plate but of course it's not cut down too much so it retains its category B offshore rating which of course is very important on a boat like this. Let's move up onto that foredeck we take a step up there and although this side deck is relatively narrow by the standards of the sector it's certainly very easy to navigate. You don't feel at all hemmed in. And when we get to the bow what we have is a central island sunbed, quite elevated, and in the centre of that, a slightly elevated circular hatch. So when you have the cushions on here, you can still chuck stuff down below, you can still get light down into that forward cabin. As you'd expect, up here you also have a proper step through fore peak, and we have a bit of rubber lining in this anchor locker as well to protect your fibreglass from the chain and to keep it nice and quiet. I have to say the steel work is also very good indeed. And if we look along the line, you'll see that on the smaller boats, you still get exactly that same calibre of steel work, whichever size of Nordstar you choose to buy. Back down the port side, you'll see we have another one of these uh, side gates, plus this side door on the pilot house we were talking about. And there's a nice little curve in the moulding here as we re-enter the cockpit. So as I say, although these side decks are relatively narrow, movement all around this boat is really quite impressive. And then we get to the uh, business end of this particular model, which is the saloon. Now as I say, this is the cruiser variant. The standard 42 is known as the Voyager, and there are several differences between these two types of boat. The first of the innovations that marks this out as the cruiser variant are these aft doors. Now, on the basic Voyager 
uh, model, you have a single door. Here we have a pair of doors, so you open up this uh, internal saloon to the external cockpit in much more convincing fashion. And to help with that, we also have this, which is quite a cool device, I have to say. This seat goes right down into deck level, so you can perch there and face off towards the other guys out here at the cockpit, or you can lift it up and integrate it with the rest of this dinette. And if I move forward, you'll see that this dinette itself is actually huge, particularly because on the port side, these two forward-facing seats, very comfortable when you're underway. We can reverse that backrest very easily and take advantage of the entire length. It's a pretty impressive space. I reckon you could easily sit eight people there, no problem at all. And because it's relatively narrow, we have loads of space on the starboard side for a much wider, more substantial galley station. And I can illustrate the difference here if I come to this diagram. Now, this is the basic Voyager model. You'll see that the Dinette comes further out into the saloon, so the galley has to be tapered. Well, they believe, quite rightly, that if you're going to use this for longer spells away from home, you need proper galley facilities, so this is it. Now, as I say, Nordstar is able to build things pretty much to your spec, particularly here because it's all uh, proper cabinetry. There's no uh, fiberglass mouldings, so it's easy for them to adjust. If you want a bigger sink, that can be done. If you want more storage spaces, smaller storage spaces, bigger storage spaces, that can all be done. What we have here, though, is uh, an induction hob. You can also have diesel hob as well. Um, they kind of shy away from gas for safety reasons and you can see why. And we also get a proper fridge freezer with a bottle chiller down the bottom as well. So this is much more substantial in terms of its facilities than the Voyager galley. Now let's take a walk forward to the helm station. And as we do so, we should notice this TV which is permanently mounted up there. And I think that uh, jars rather horribly. It doesn't look great. Um, it's the choice of the owner though. And Nordstar is at pains to stress that, well, this is a hollow unit, so they can easily engineer a TV that stays out of the way until you need it, drops down when you do. There's plenty of space up there in the classical uh, pilot house style, though, for additional data displays. And down at the helm, the ergonomics look as impressive as you'd expect of a boat of this type. Let's we'll start with the seat. Now, this is by Grammar, so it's got suspension built into it, plus a couple of uh, armrests there. Really comfortable armchair for long distances at sea. Plenty of travel, too, for it to move fore and aft. And should you require it, you can pick the option that has it rotating to face across to the guys at that port de So that's certainly an option I would look to take. What we don't have here at this dash is the kind of rotating adjustable uh, dash panel that you often see on Sargos and Targas. But we do have adjustability in the wheel and it is a very cleanly arranged dash space. A big 24 inch display up there, but you can obviously pick other solutions, multiple uh, MFDs if you prefer. Um, a pet hate of mine is having tabs on the left hand when I think they belong on the right, but so many people simply put those on auto and then drive, so it's less of an issue these days. And what we do have on the starboard side, next to your throttle, is your joystick, and that's perfectly placed for you to step through that door and do your business in terms of coming alongside manoeuvres, so that's uh, very practical indeed. Over on the port side, we've got another couple of seats to face forward. It's very comfortable with a little foot brace with the door, which is as good for ventilation as it is for seamanship practicality, plus a grab rail and a neat little cubby hole for your bits and bobs. And this wood, incidentally, is really quite pleasant, slightly more glossy than uh, a lot of finishes you tend to see, but uh, it's a very pale uh, oak. I think they call it white oak, in fact, and uh, it looks superb. Now, while we're here at this particular point, what we should do is lift up this chair and take a look at the mid cabin. Now that is an enormous point of access. On pilot house cruisers of this type, generally the access to the mid cabin is tight and often requires a bit of a contortion act, but this is very impressive indeed. Deep, deep steps to take us down there. And when we get down there, if I close the heads over, you'll see that we have perfectly decent headroom here, about six foot one, I would say. And if I swivel around and look to starboard, well, that is an absolutely enormous footprint. 
It's quite cool actually because you retain a decent bit of headroom here at the foot of these beds with a space that drops down between them. So it's a great place to change, quite a comfortable place to sit. When you get below that saloon deck itself and shunt your way toward the head end, and again, the scale is really impressive. Two enormous single beds, plus a central infill that hinges over so you can have one entire double, which uh, is way larger than a king size, I would suggest. In fact, it's so large that I could feasibly sleep as a six footer fore and aft. So if you're in the forward cabin and you've got a large family, you've got four or five kids, it'd be absolutely no problem to open this bed right up and to just stick them all in sleeping bags uh, and let them spend the night in here, no problem at all. We also have a decent bit of shelving at the back here, plus USB points, and a lot of storage built into these cabinets on that aft bulkhead. If we look aft, here is our heads compartment. Now apparently some of Nordstar's clients have uh, investigated the idea of a wet room. This is not that, this is a dedicated heads compartment and Nordstar's looking into it because as things stand this is the whole side so there's not sufficient depth for a drain and pump under there so they're looking into the uh, feasibility of elevating that floor to enable that to happen. As things stand as I say it's a dedicated heads compartment it's a very attractive one. If I come inside here you'll see that uh, again six foot one of headroom, full standing headroom, you don't have to stoop at all. And I particularly like these. This is a really nice little solution, quite simple, but it looks and feels quite cool. It's much, much better than a flappy curtain. and kind of matches the bulkhead design as well. So it's a classy little space, I have to say. What you really want to do though is take a look at the owner's cabin. So we'll scoot up top, head straight down by that central companionway, and here it is. Now as you can see, it's entirely symmetrical. And it's actually very attractive on account of that. You get little steps up on both sides, good access to both sides of that bed. We also get hanging storage on both sides. And I really like this, these little storage units here. Again, this is quality work, proper cabinetry, solid oak, lovely little storage units those. Now these windows here are not particularly big. We do get more of these lovely little curtains that we saw aft in that uh, mid cabin. But of course the uh, cabin is made all the brighter by the fact that we've got that circular skylight we saw on the foredeck earlier. And you know it's, uh, it's quite an interesting thing because I often think about Nordstar as a, a more modern, more cutting edge kind of builder in terms of its design solutions and certainly its materials than the likes of Sago or Targa. But then you come across something like this, a circular uh, deck hatch instead of a rectangular or square one and all of a sudden it feels just that little bit more traditional again. Even so, what else we have in here are little storage drawers beneath the bed. We get quite traditional uh, reading lights at the head end of the bed. We also have a mirror here on the port side and on the starboard side we have access to your heads compartment. As you can see, it's dual access. You can access it from the central companionway too, so it's well placed for that dinette. Operates very well as a day heads. If I step in here, well again, you'll see that the cabinetry is very heavy duty, high quality. Now I think this is a little cubby hole. Yes, it is for your toilet rolls. Also got a high level opening porthole, plus decent access to the wiring at the back of the dash. And because we're beneath the helm, of course, headroom is particularly good in here. What I really like about this arrangement, though, is not the toilet itself so much as the fact that it's split off from the port side where we find a dedicated shower compartment. I like that a lot. It works really well to split those facilities, particularly if you favour long-term cruising. So it works particularly well on a boat like this cruiser variant. Now, of course, the fact that we have this on the port side, a proper dedicated shower compartment, that kind of does away with the necessity to investigate a wet room further aft in that mid cabin too. So it works in all kinds of ways. So let's have a little look aft into this uh, engine bay and talk about performance. Now, this particular boat, as you can see, is fitted with a pair of Volvo Penta 
D6 440s on stern drives, and that's apparently good for around about 38 to 40 knots. You can also have it fitted out though with IPS 600s or 650s, although the guys here at Nordstar tell me that the vast majority of these boats are specced with stern drives, which is particularly interesting. Now down here, we have space, you'll see on the starboard side, there's our calorifier and space with the generator there too. And you'll also notice that we've got some decent space for storage. Storage boxes over there on top of the battery boxes, that grey box down there that houses both the domestic and the starter batteries. And if we look directly down here, you'll see we also have really good usable access to the various filters and strainers and belts. So it's a very practical arrangement, this. Now it's easy, isn't it, when you're looking into offshore pilot house cruisers to reel off names like Sargo and Targa and then to leave it at that. But Nordstar absolutely deserves a place at the top of that short list. After all, it's a third generation builder. It's been building boats along these lines for the best part of a century. So it absolutely knows what it's doing. And when you're walking around this boat, you feel that. Now this is available with or without a flybridge. It's available uh, with IPS drives or stern drives, as I mentioned earlier. And in terms of the layout and the fixtures and fittings and materials, there's all kinds of flexibility dialed into this package so you can tailor it precisely to the way you like to go boating. So if you're looking for a proper offshore pilot house cruiser at between 40 and 45 feet, and you're happy with a four berth layout, then you absolutely need to come and take a look at this.